And we're going to start with one of my three double digit upsets. Um, and, and, and I'll be honest, I mean, this week I didn't really have one of those double digit upsets where I was just, oh, I'm all over this. I, I really like this one. So I'm taking three teams that I think are qual quality enough programs, good football teams, but they're really stepping up in class, all three of these teams. And that's why I'm a little bit hesitant. But you know what? I think they're, they're I, I'm just going to go with them. One of them is Wisconsin. And, 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 I, and, and I still don't know what to make out of Alabama yet. We saw what happened last year. They were able to turn their season around kind of after that South Florida uh, game last year. Surprisingly, it went deep into the game again with South Florida last week. That was a big surprise. So I'm still not sure what to make of Alabama, except we, we, we give them credit. We give the coach credit. We, this is a quality team. If, if, but in this spot, uh, I don't mind going and saying, well, first road game. Wisconsin, everybody's kind of forgetting about them. They've, but they've won their first two. But like Arizona, they didn't look pretty doing it. Um, and I think a lot of people might be expecting that Wisconsin now is, is they're in big trouble. They're playing an SEC team. They're going to get exposed. They haven't looked good. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to give Luke Fickle a shot because I know things didn't go his way last year. Uh, but I'm going to give him one shot, and that's going to be in this game because they've only been a home dog twice in the last ten years. They covered both times, but it was against Ohio State. That's it. Uh, so they're not used to being in this spot because th they're a very good program, especially at home. But then again, it's how rare is it for Wisconsin to get Alabama to come uh, to uh, uh, to Camp Randall? So I'll roll the dice uh, on uh, on Wisconsin uh, because they're a big five twenty five money line uh, dog. <laughs> I agree with it, Greg. I like Wisconsin in this football game as well. And you mentioned how rare is it for Wisconsin to be taking points like this? Well, I'll tell you how rare it is. This is only the third time since 1928 that Alabama has played on a Big Ten field. They don't journey out too often. And when they do, it's usually against the cupcakes, not the Big Ten teams of the football world. That's what they're going to do here. 1928, three times. Uh, that's a long, long time between drinks of water for Alabama. I think they're going to find the atmosphere here to be not all that uh, favoring for Alabama in this football contest. You'll find oftentimes these undefeated teams, Greg, they get off to these nice starts, especially against these pancakes. Then suddenly they find themselves in a football game. And now the question is, how will they react now that they're in a football game rather than just going through the motions? There'll be no going through the motions uh, in this football game uh, when they're playing the Badgers here on Saturday. I like Alabama plus the points. And if an upset occurred here, Greg, I won't be surprised. Yeah, I think if it's going to happen, it's going to happen on, on the defensive side. So I, I do not believe if Wisconsin wins this game, it's going to be 34-31. I'd be surprised. I think if they win this game, it's going to be a slugfest. It's going to be a 19-17 a type of game. Yes, yes, it will, right. Because that's where Wisconsin – because the, the offense still just hasn't looked as good as we know it's capable – or at least we think it's capable. Of course, they don't have that star running back. Malusi's okay, but he's not Braylon Allen. He's not Jonathan Taylor. And the offensive passing game with Van Dyke, with, with Longo coming in last year, it just hasn't clicked yet. So, But we'll see. Again, it's up to the defense, and we'll see if Luke Fickle has something uh, in the tank there as a home dog. All right. Uh, also, we'll stick in the SEC just quickly. Georgia, Kentucky, they're a heavy favorite. What do you think about this matchup? Because – um, Georgia, when they're in this spot, uh, th this is actually not, this hasn't been historically good for them. In other words, they're coming off a game in which they've scored more than 45 points. And over the last three years, when they play games after one of those types of 45 or more performances, they're only one and eight against the spread the last three years. Meanwhile, Kentucky six and one against the spread as an, as an, uh, 11 point or more, uh, dog. Uh, in a revenge situation. Of course, they got blown out last year at Georgia when the last couple of meetings have been pretty tough. I do like Mark Stoops in this football game here. I know I have this uh, this habit. People say it's a bad habit of always trying to knock down the number one team in college football each and every week. Well, I'm not going to be on the number one team each and every week. I can assure you that. So when I find an opportunity with a good team and a reason to play that brings something to the table, I'm going to make a case for them. That's the case here for Kentucky in this football game. You've got Mark Stoops uh, in a role that he really, really uh, relishes, and that's as a home underdog and as a double-digit dog. You get the combination of the two. Georgia here looking perfect right now. I, I think everybody has them in the 
championship playoff game right now at, yeah. at, this, at this stage of the football season. But, you know, they, it's because they won 41 regular season games in a row. So people get tired of watching them win all the time. But this is a really, really tricky spot here at Kentucky here. You mentioned uh, how he does not perform well after high scoring outbursts at Georgia. Kirby Smart does not. You put all that stuff together here. I think this football game will come down to who scores last. And if it's Georgia, they're still the number one team. If it's not, oh. if it's not, then we talk about another huge upset on Saturday's card. Wow. You're we go. really behind Kentucky here. I, yes, I am. I, I, I yes. was surprised by that. Good. All right. Interesting. Like I said, I mean, if you take a look at it, the last, uh, the, before last year, the, the preceding couple of matchups had been pretty close. Okay. Uh, Next one, also SEC matchup, or at least one SEC team. This one at home, Missouri, big favorite, 16 and a half against Boston College. Boston College came up with the big upset against Florida State that we talked about, of course, two weeks ago as uh, as a uh, outright upset on your behalf against FSU as a 19 point dog. I don't, I can't see Boston College winning again. That would be like, well, wait a second. What are they? Uh, <laughs> Final Four competitive? Uh, competitor? There you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't see that happening, but I like the points. It's a lot of points. It's, it, 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 and, and I'm not saying I don't think it should be. I, I probably had Missouri more as a 14, but it's up to close to 17. And BC is actually 5011 ATS less six versus SEC teams. So I'm going to go ahead and take the points here because, again, Bill O'Brien's worth it. He's already proven it. Castellano is an excellent quarterback. We've talked about him. Uh, not a pro quarterback. He's a really good college quarterback. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, Cook has been a little bit uh, underwhelming so far uh, this season. But uh, this is a game that I can see BC hanging around. I'm 100% in agreement with you again here, Greg. Uh, this is a Boston College football team, and you hit it right on the head. Bill O'Brien, that, that's a nice, nice edge at the at the coaching position. I know Elijah Drinkwitz has done a nice job with this football team, but Bill yeah. O'Brien, you know, who would you rather be your head coach, Bill O'Brien or Elijah Drinkwitz? Uh, there's no doubt in my mind who I would rather have. In Boston College, you've also got a team that's loaded with experience, 17 starters back from last year's football team. They proved it in that upset against Florida State. And it's my feeling that sooner or later, Missouri is going to be exposed as a fraud. Uh, they, su they surprised everybody last year. And it caught some fire at the end. They've opened up pretty good here this year, but I think they're going to be exposed. And if it happens here this weekend, I'm not going to be surprised again. Wow. Okay. Oh, surprising me again. Look at this Boston <laughs> college and Kentucky. All right. Uh, let's now talk about the next game. We're going to go outside the sec and talk uh, big 10 football, or at least a little Big Ten football. We've got these matchups, these, these Pac-12 early season matchups, and I know they're not Pac-12 anymore, but it's Oregon at Oregon State and Washington State at Washington. What is this, November? Uh, so it's kind of fun to get these rivalry matchups this early in the season. Uh, but let's start with that Oregon game because, wow, I mean, <laughs> Oregon last week. Now, we, we know how good Boise State has been, thanks to Genty. And Genty has been fantastic. And we've talked him up, and you saw for yourself. Matter of fact, uh, last week we, we put him in our Heisman odds watch, and he was 100 to 1. He's now 22 to 1. Wow. So hopefully, if you watched the show last week, you grabbed him at 100 to 1 because you lost a lot of value there after last week's awesome performance and almost upsetting uh, Oregon on their home turf. But here's the thing is that Oregon – you know, even though they won the game and it was a better team, it's still, this is not the Oregon team we were expecting. We were expecting a couple of blowouts to start the season. I mean, even though Boise State's quality team, we still expect, they were 20 point favorite. We expected them to win 21 points. I mean, and they barely won the game. And now this is the road opener. Oregon State, of course, the big rival. And let's not forget, here's the, here's the thing. We don't, it, this is tough because Oregon State, Jonathan Smith's gone. But we, all, we know when Jonathan Smith was there, this was a very tough team at home. 13 and two against the spread the last three years at home. That is just awesome. So I'm going to take an Oregon state and the 17. And this is just like Wisconsin going to be my, one of my double digit upset picks of the week. Hey, Greg, I'm going to have to order up a diploma for you from the Mark Lawrence double digit live dog school. Oh no. Of handicapping. Yes. <laughs> and I'm hundred percent with you on this game here as well. This has to stop. 
So one of these one of these games, it'll stop. We, we yeah. can't keep agreeing. Each, yeah, each yeah because we'll find a hole in the dog or, yeah. or something that we don't want to step in front of. But uh, there's a common denominator, a thread in these two games here, and I'm going to tell you about it in just a bit here. But uh, there's also a great author out there. Uh, he's a freelance author. He's an Oregon-based writer. His name is John Canzano, and he publishes something called The Ball Face Truth. And he's a terrific writer, writer and he keeps a, a hand on a pulse on the Oregon football teams like no other, nobody else in, that I know of does. I subscribe to his, his pri, pri, writings, I should say. And in one short sentence, he calls Oregon a hot mess. And the reason he calls them a hot mess is because you, you're never going to be surprised if they're going to deliver a clunker or they're going to blow somebody out. They're capable of playing awful and incredible week to week to week. Now, what have we got here? We've got Oregon just about ready to kick off their debut in the Big Ten Conference, and Oregon State looking for a partner in the Pac-2. This is the Civil War we're talking about. And all of a right. sudden, all of a sudden, there's secession here. Uh, Oregon's gone somewhere else, and Oregon State's left here to stay at home and mind the children. I think this is a huge game for Oregon State in a statement-making game in a football contest like this. Oregon has not played consistent football thus far this football season, and if they don't bring their A game here, they're going to get taken out in this contest as well. I went so far in our newsletter to call Oregon State our upset game of the week. Wow. Holy moly. <laughs> this is as much as we've uh, been uh, simpatico on yes. these games. So it's going to change. You'll see. It'll change real quick. Uh, okay. but I like it. Makes me feel good about that. Uh, all right. So there, uh, and the other one again is Washington and Washington state. So you got the apple cup in September. Oh, by the way, let's keep in mind about this too. The home team in the civil war has won five straight. So yes. nice. that, uh, people not, may not realize that, you know, so Oregon state's done their part. They're at home in the series. They've won it. Um, Meanwhile, you get the Apple Cup. By the way, this will be at Lumen Field. So this is where Seattle plays the Seahawks in the NFL. And Washington is a five-point favorite. And I have been impressed with how Washington State started their season. They had a nice win last week uh, against Texas Tech. So that was nice because they're in that same situation as Oregon State, as you just mentioned. Um, but if you look at it here, Washington has really dominated the series. They've won 12 out of 14. They've covered 10 out of 14. And also... Uh, one of the trends I have here is, is that they've covered nine straight as a favorite of 17 or less, wow. taking on an opponent with a revenge situation off back-to-back -back straight up wins. And where did I get these trends? Where did you, all those trends are just flashed on the board. Where did I get them? I got them right here. The Playbook yep. Magazine. So you can check it out. You can order this. I have a link in the description of the video. Uh, I can't, can't handicap games without it. If for some reason... Uh, you want more than this, or uh, you want to check out something that's more on a week to week deal, then check out the newsletter, uh, the week to week newsletter that will also have a link in the description from Playbook uh, Sports. So, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and take Washington, uh, especially because the line is pretty small at five. Greg, give me that diploma back, if you would, please. Oh, here we go. Finally. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, again, uh, go with the, the rivalry. Look. The rivalry dog, okay, that's the key, a rivalry, Apple Cup rivalry, uh, soon to be over as they head to the Big Ten. Uh, and you got something unique in this football game. This is the first time you got to go back to 1936 to find the last time these two teams were both undefeated when they met in the Apple Cup. Well, that's because it's September. That's awesome. Yes. That's, yes. And that's the reason is because they usually play at the end of the season. Okay. Yeah. But now here it is the front end of the season here. But again, I'm, I'm going to allude to the fact that where's Washington going next week? They got Northwestern, the big 10 opener, Washington state looking for a dance partner. Again, uh, I don't say that Washington state looks at Oregon like they bailed on them. No, because it wasn't Washington's entire doing, but Washington state was left home and not invited to the party. And I think they're going to also come as hard as they can in this football game. I like them plus the points.